Usyk versus Joshua rematch still on track for April, says Eddie Hearn. Let's talk. Push the weight in the flex, flex. The live is one in the six. Hey. If it's the runner boy, you nigga, no question. You would run a motherfucker high stepping. Hey. hey, you never had a big enough weapon. Hey. Motherfucker never learned your lesson. Right. Hey. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Woo. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Woo. I mean, they walk and drink blood, things out. Full moon, motherfucker, change like a hoe. Right. I'm just a nigga from the hood trying to stack a little cheddar for the Drew Titan Bronx on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. Boxing scene. Link will be in the description. Usyk versus Joshua. Rematch still on track for April. Says Hearn. Eddie Hearn, promoter, former two-time heavyweight champion, Anthony Joshua, says the rematch with Alexander Usyk still on track to take place in April of 2022. Back in September, Usyk outboxed AJ over 12 rounds to capture the WBA, WBO, IBF, IBO titles at the Tottingham Hotspur Stadium. Joshua would then ex exercise an immediate rematch clause. Good for him. Obviously, not much other than we, we got to get together. Well, let me read that again. Obviously, not much other than we got to get together and decide the date. This is written kind of funny. Maybe maybe it's later I'm reading it, but whatever. How I'm reading it. April is a realistic is realistic for that fight. And uh, it's gonna be uh held in April. Whatever. Eddie Hearn told IFL TV. AJ is the type that fights twice a year. And sometimes we feel like it would be nice to fight three times a year. Cap. Whatever, man. We've had offers from around the world, but I think the UK will stage that great fight. According to Hearn, there won't be any discussions of step aside deal. <laughs> step aside, wow. There was some chatter regarding a possibility of jo Joshua stepping aside in order to allow Usyk the opportunity to face WBC champion Tyson Fury in a full division unification. But the WBC ordered Fury to make a mandatory defense against Dillian White. Those negotiations have stalled as White currently is engaged in a legal battle with the sanctioning body. I spoke on that before. Y'all want to know more about it? Go read it. <laughs> it's funny. <clears throat> we have to sit down with Usyk's manager and we'll get a Christmas out of the way. And we'll start moving towards uh, with we'll start moving towards with that uh, because it's time to start planning for that. Hearn said. Obviously, there were a couple of discussions about step asides and those kinds of fights, so we'll have to see. But that looks very unlikely now because obviously of the Dillian White situation, which AJ is pleased about. He didn't want to have those conversations unless I presented them to him. So if that's not the case, he moves forward and uh, he wants the Usyk rematch. Y'all go ahead and read this. I'm stumbling through it. Don't care. And uh, link will be in the description. And I, I, don't, I don't care because here's why. Boxing is so messed up right now. Here's why. Maybe I was just disinterested in quoting Eddie Hearn. Y'all know I really don't particularly care for the guy. You know, he's a liar. You know, um, he's full of crap. Because I look at Usyk, and this is no shade to Alexander. He's in the position where he is because he earned it. The man is the real deal. Um, uh, uh, undisputed at cruiserweight, came into heavyweight, fought a tough opponent in Derek Chisoria. Dirk Chisora, and he uh, did his thing. Got in the ring with AJ, and uh, he did his thing. Almost stopped him. You know, so props to Alexander Usyk. You know, making the statement and uh, doing what he had to do. Um, but uh, this really is Eddie Hearn's fault. Uh, Y'all remember when AJ lost to Andy Ruiz? 
could have swore. Y'all gonna have to. You're gonna have to uh, uh, look up the quote. Maybe I'm bugging, but didn't AJ said for his first professional loss, in regards to his first professional loss, didn't he say that he would have rather his loss be to Deontay Wilder? Could have swore he said that. Maybe I'm bugging. Maybe I imagined that. I don't think I did. Could have swore he said that. You see, AJ, this could have been your second loss. Um, you see Eddie Hearn sitting there and was standing there in the middle. He's looking at you. He's not looking at Alexander. He's looking at you. You're the fighter. You're supposed to go in there and get things done. But Eddie Hearn works for you. Well, he did work for you. You just signed a lifetime contract with him. I'm not even going to talk about that. But you're supposed to tell Eddie what to do. And if you wanted that Deontay Wilder fight, you could have got it. But you want to talk about freezing people out and you're asking for 50 million and then you see the 50 million. Uh, Eddie Hearn saw the 50 million and you just didn't do it. Fast forward to now. You got two losses on your record. Deontay Wilder has two losses on his record. And now I'm hearing rumblings about people saying, hey man, if you don't win against Usyk, you would be a good fight if Deontay decides he wants to fight again. You see where we're at with this? What I'm saying is, you guys could have fought two years ago. And whoever walked away from that, the victory, we'd have just walked away. And you know what? One of you would have been undisputed. Then you would have dealt with Usyk. If you won, you'd have dealt with Usyk and just dealt with it. If Deontay won, he just dealt with it and how he dealt with it. Who knows? Who knows? But everything is spread out and Eddie Hearn is kicking himself in the behind because he made poor choices. And AJ, you allowed it, man. You allowed this. You allowed this. Regardless of how you feel, the Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder fight has lost a lot of its luster. I'm still not confused about the outcome. I think he beats Anthony Joshua. Just like I think King Kong, King Kong Ortiz would have stopped AJ. I'm sure of that. Now, based off of what I saw with Usyk, six foot three southpaw, who almost knocked you out in the 12th round. Had you on dear knees two times in the fight. Now add an extra two inches to that with an extra, what, 30 pounds? A little bit more strength in the same southpaw stance with a hell of a lot of pop. King Kong Ortiz would have slept you in five. I'm convinced. I watched the Usyk fight and I said, oh yeah, this is why he didn't fight King Kong Ortiz. He'd have killed you. He'd have killed you. So now we got to deal with a rematch here and I'm going to watch it. I am. But I don't pick AJ to win. Unless he comes back completely as a new fighter and shows us things that he's never done before because that was AJ in the ring. He just couldn't think outside the box and he couldn't do anything to stop what Usyk was bringing. Now, that's my opinion on the rematch. The rematch, same thing. If AJ don't get stopped, now, if he does something different, maybe he does. But here's where I'm at with this. I have no drive to even hope 
that AJ wins this fight because it means nothing. He gets those three belts back and then does what? Sits on them? Is it three belts? He's four belts? This is how uninterested I am, really, as far as the outcome. He beats Usyk, then what? He waits on what? Tyson? At this point, does he beat Tyson Fury? <laughs> no. The world of boxing, the sport of boxing is on a full tilt right now. And you guys just really don't get it. You don't understand. There's a reason why we need to, if the fight is hot, make the fight. A lot of it has to do with these promoters. But for those of the, of the fighters that are in charge of making the decisions, like y'all know y'all are, make the right decision for yourself. And if you give a crap about your supporters, make the decision for them. We're the consumer. We are the reasons why you guys are worth millions of dollars. We get online, we fuss, we fight over you. <clears throat> and you walk around and act like you don't care. Some of you, Bud fans, Bud fanatics, nothing makes sense anymore. But I'll tell you what I'm reading. I'll tell you what I've read. And I've done a video about it. 2028, unless they fix boxing in the Olympics, there ain't going to be no boxing in the Olympics. Are y'all paying attention? Now, if they do that there, what do you think is going to happen in the pros at some point? If your favorite fighter is winning and on top of the world, but they're failing A and B sample drug tests, and the sanctioning bodies don't care, they're letting them go ahead and compete. If the sanctioning body is allowing uh, uh, Fugazi judges and corrupt referees to be hired, referees with pre-existing uh, 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 pre uh, uh, conditions of fraud in which they were reprimanded in, still being allowed to compete. Judges on the take, refs on the take. open cheating in the ring that we see with our own two eyes by way of equipment poisoning and all kinds of weird stuff going on think about how you guys feel when a corrupt cop gets brought up on charges and we see the violation via social media instagram facebook Live stream, a live murder, court, and we see it. And then that cop goes to court. And in a month, the department comes about and says, look, we've investigated ourselves. And we found that we've done nothing wrong. Nothing to see here. We've done nothing wrong. And now we're sitting in the living room throwing punches in the air, falling on the floor like, how? We just saw the guy get murdered. The police officer did it. Nothing to see here, right? You can't maintain integrity when it comes to that uh, 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 situation. When I say maintain integrity, I mean, you're, you're an honest person. So you can't see something faulty like that and say, hey, man, that's not right. Yeah, it's not right. But then you look at boxing and you see your favorite fighter being babied and taken care of. And you know that they're not clean. You know they're dirty in some way, shape, or form. But because they're, they're worth money to a sanctioning body, you say nothing. You are what's wrong with the sport of boxing. You see Eddie Hearn sitting there, well, standing right there, looking at AJ. He's looking at his product. He's looking right at him. All the testosterone exemptions didn't help him defend against the Southpaw stance. It didn't. Sometimes the chips don't fall in your favor. Now, once upon a time, there were a lot of Anthony Joshua fans raiding our chats, talking nonsense. Look now. AJ lost. Because he couldn't do nothing with this man. 
And I know, oh, yeah, well, what about Wilder? What about Wilder? Yeah, I know that there was a grand scheme to dethrone Wilder. That's the difference. AJ had a lot of protection and still fumbled the rock. Deontay was by himself and all he had was us. And basically that's all he needed. Because he wasn't supposed to go as far as he did, but he did. Hold the entire sport accountable. Either you support the sport or you don't. Remember, I was team Big Baby Miller when he was fighting AJ. But when he popped dirty, I said, hey, man, I wanted you to beat AJ, but I didn't want you to kill him. What were you trying to do? Oh, well, he has testosterone exemptions. All right, well, he ain't get caught. You did, man. Come on, man. That's me. That's the type of supporter I am. Who are you? This Usyk versus AJ thing, it didn't even have to happen. So to the AJ fans, would you rather have seen him lose to Deontay Wilder or King Kong Ortiz? Or are you okay with this, him losing to Usyk? We all knew he was good, but this was the last thing we, you, as an AJ fan, this was the last thing you really wanted to see. Stop lying. Stop lying. You ain't want to see this. If he gets stopped by King Kong Ortiz, what would you say? Well, man, at least it was King Kong Ortiz. If he got stretched out by Deontay Wilder, you say, hey, man, he, it was Deontay Wilder, though. But everyone swore up and down. He was going to walk down Usyk and impose his size and beat this man. Didn't happen. So now look, we're here. Look at the losses he does have now. Ruiz and now Usyk. Two guys that were significantly smaller than him. One was a little chubby kid. And the only reason why he won the second fight was because, I mean, let's face it, Andy was not in shape. I don't know how he beats Usyk based off of what I saw. Unless he comes back as a different fighter. And whatever he tries to do, if he tries to walk Usyk down and impose as well, Usyk will think outside the box. He only had to do one thing during that fight. And that's what he did. And I'm willing to bet Usyk is a smart enough fighter. When AJ makes the adjustments, he'll adjust to those adjustments. And we'll be back to square one. I don't know. Outside of a puncher's chance. If AJ beats Usyk, I'm going to roll with Usyk on this. You have to. This isn't hate. This is real talk. But I want you guys to understand something. You hardcore AJ fans. You, you hardcore Eddie Hearn fans. We are here with this. With Eddie and AJ here. We're here because you guys stopped the Wilder fight. I know for a fact, again, you would rather look on his record and say, okay, he has a loss against Ortiz or just a loss against Deontay. You could have did without this. Because I'm going to tell you right now, AJ loses to Usyk again. That's it for him. There's nothing else for him to do. He's going to have to fight his way back. And you know who's down there waiting for him? Guys like Jared Anderson. Guys like uh, 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 Frank Sanchez. Guys like King Kong Ortiz, I, I really feel, you know, <clears throat> he's going to fight uh, Prince Charles Martin first day of the year. I think he'll get through that. You know, if he don't, he don't. But, you know, I think he will get through that. In this instance, if he beats Usyk, he can fight Tyson Fury and have a chance at being undisputed. Have a chance, but I don't think he beats Fury. So what's next for AJ? If he loses to Usyk, you think he, you think you think AJ can beat Frank Sanchez? I'm telling you straight up and down, no. I'm gonna tell you straight up and down, no. You think he beats Jared Anderson? I'm gonna tell you straight up and down, no. He don't. AJ's not the invincible force that y'all made him out to be, that Eddie Hearn made him out to be, at all. At all. So we'll see in April. That man in the middle, you have him to thank. 
Bronx on deck.